I'm really, 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 really good at this shit. You know what I'm saying? So I saw your meet and greet in there. Does it ever get old to see the type of line that was in there? Like all the fans coming out to see you, that had to be quite humbling. <laughs> nah, man, it'll never, it'll never get old, man. It's, it, it's, it's just, it's a reminder, you know what I mean? For me, like, to know like where I came from. Sure. God Don't Make Mistakes, mm -hmm. project on the way. Mm -hmm. It's your fifth project since 2020. So obviously you've been incredibly prolific, <laughs> you know, in this short amount of time. I didn't even know that. Yeah, you know it's, it's been crazy, man, it's been crazy. Yeah. So, how would you describe where you are at this stage in your career as an artist? I feel like I, I've, I've reached a, a level of uh, maturity with my shit. Not even with my, my shit, just my approach, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Before, like, when, you know, coming into this shit, I just always had that chip on my shoulder. Like, I just felt like everybody was food. That's why a lot of my projects was named. I just felt like everybody can, is food and anybody can get it. So I always had that chip on my shoulder, and I was always just, uh, my approach was always that, you know what I'm saying? And it's like now I'm, I've, I've come to realize, you know, my power, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, what I, what I represent in this shit and what people love me for in this shit. And I could just kind of like be, you know, be me kind of more. I don't have to worry about proving anything no more to nobody like that. that that I still have that when I, you know what I mean? But it's like, I, I know like, I, you know, I got Buster telling me I'm, I'm doing right. I got Nas, I got Hov, you know what I'm saying? I got cats like that. So it's like now I can kind of like just focus on, you know, just carrying on tradition in, 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 in the right way. No, I think it was super evident by the features that you have on this upcoming project from Beanie Siegel to Anderson Pack mm -hmm. to Jill Scott. Um, some of your projects, is pretty much you on there. You want to showcase your skills, but mm -hmm. with this one, it's a lot of features. Mm -hmm. What made you decide on that to reach out to so many different artists? A lot of it was just the relationships I built with yeah. these people. You know what I'm saying? It's like I, I kind of like build relationships, and I'm never the guy that like kind of like you know use that to for my own personal gain. Like, yo, we gotta do a joint. Then it's yeah. like, it's usually just genuine. Like, I just, you know, I, I just, if I fuck with you, I fuck with you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I think one of your best qualities is your ear for music and your ear for beat selection. So mm -hmm. to see you team up with Rick Ross mm -hmm. and Lil Wayne for Tear Gas, yeah. I had a feeling like that's gonna be one of the ones when it, when it comes out, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So how did it, how'd you go about getting that collaboration secured between those two? Honestly, man, you know, I definitely gotta thank thank my bro Two Chains, man. You know, Two Chains is a real dude, man. Like, you know, I come to find out, you know, I got I got reached out by Wayne Camp, like Mac Main and them niggas reached out, but they told me like, yeah, nah, Two Chains was playing me your shit, bro. I love, I fuck with your shit, blah, 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 blah. But I had never met Two Chains, you know mm. what I'm saying, or had a conversation with him on the phone or nothing. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying, and it's just ill than that to know that you know it's dudes that you know still do shit like that. Cause I do, I will play somebody shit like yo, you ain't, oh, you ain't hear this, you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then when I did that, I had then my verse on that, and I just I ain't had nowhere else to go with. I couldn't think of nothing or whatever. And it should just hit me like yo, let me hit these niggas. Right. Like yo, I got something for you. And, you know, Wayne sent the verse back like probably that same night or that next morning. Really? Like after that, I just was like, yo, man, send this shit to Rose, like just jokingly around. And Rose sent that shit back to, by the next morning, same way. You know, niggas, you know, niggas look at them niggas in high regard when it comes to this music shit and this rap shit and just everything niggas stand for. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I've been, you know, following Wayne, his whole career, and Ross and all that shit, like, so, that shit mean a lot to me that niggas even fuck with my shit. Right. First and foremost, if we do something, we do something, but the fact that you even, like, damn, you acknowledging, to me, that's an acknowledgement that, you know, I'm doing something right with it, you know what I'm saying, and I, that's worth more than the feature, honestly, yeah. to me. For sure. For sure. I noticed with all of your projects, the titles are very intentional, whether it's from King to a God, mm. with this one, God Don't Make Mistakes. Mm. So for this particular project, what made you arrive at that title? Was that something you came to at this point in your life? Was it being reflective? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah, I was just being reflective. It was just where I was at with it at that time in my life. 
honestly, this this album kind of already been done for like maybe like two years or more, like two and a half years. You know what I'm saying? I just been, you know, it's a lot of politics. It's a lot of stuff that go into getting an album out. Yeah. You know, artists don't be really knowing and understanding. Me, I come from the independent world. Right. You know, I'm up and coming nigga from Buffalo. Yeah. I don't know no better. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I don't really realize the what it take for, you know, to get an album out through a major, yeah. you know, a, a, a sentence that I was saying to myself one day, like, you know what I mean? Look what I became. I went from king to a god. And God don't make mistakes, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. So those projects, like I got to look what I became tape, mm -hmm. it led into the from king to a god. Yeah. And then it's leading into, that was like the, the lead into the God don't make mistakes. That's how I kind of came up with that. You know what I'm saying? Going from just being, you know what I mean, just shot and hospitalized and, you know, in a wheelchair and, you know what I'm saying, having a have a patch over my eye and a neck brace and all that shit on for like a, a year or two, kind of, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to be rocking stages and selling out shows and, you know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, look what I became, you feel me? Absolutely. And then my maturity and how I've, how I've, um, I've changed just as a person. You know, being just a, a hot head and just ready to fly off at the handle all the time and just be on some street shit to being like, you know, just educating myself on the business right. side of things and just getting everything going with my brand. Yeah. That's where I, where, where I was at with it. So in the grand scheme of things, do you feel like you're you're underrated as an MC in this game? Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. hesitation. You, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm very underrated, right. criminally underrated. So when do you feel like you're top five, top three? What would, where would you rank yourself? Number one. Number one. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Number one. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know, there ain't no slightest shade of nobody, none of that to nobody, man. Niggas know where I'm at with how I think, how I move. Like I feel like I'm, you know, I, I feel like man, the game ain't never seen this, and it's you know, God willing, you know what I'm saying? You know, ask anybody, any one of my peers, any one of my homies in this rap shit, anybody I fuck with, they will tell you I'm the most humble and grateful, you know what I'm saying, individuals ever. So it's not like coming from a place of arrogance or cockiness. It's actually a point of, of coming from a place of me just being confident in what I bring to the game. Right. And I just feel like, man, we ain't had this feel since like Pac one of them niggas big. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, one of the, one of them one of those them pantheon greats. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I say that with my head up high. Like I feel like I, I'm not I'm not one. Nah, I feel that. Cause on Blood Rose, you said, uh, let me get let me get the lyric right. You said, uh, top three nigga when I'm focused. Yes. So, I guess you've had moments where you feel like you weren't focused in this mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. What type of things kind of got you off kilter, made you not focus, so to speak? Probably just, you know, just worrying about shit I can't control, you know what I'm saying? Just like label things? Label stuff, you know, going through stuff with these labels, man. I'm telling you, this, you know, dealing with these major labels and just these contracts and these deals and shit, man, that shit is just, it can be kind of, you know, it can be frustrating at times, it can be discouraging, and demoralizing at times, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it, I, I kind of like, there have been times where I just wanted to throw in the towel, you know what I'm saying? And just quit the game completely? Yeah, really? shit like that. Do other things to, you know, f you know, facilitate for my family and my loved ones. But, you know, again, I tap back into, like, you know, thinking about shit like that, the meet and greet lines yeah. and, you know, them people that just like, bro, you the man, I ain't felt like this. And, right. you know, you the Ellis, bro, you top five, you this, that, and the third, and, you know, that's kind of like where I get my focus back from. You found yourself on Donda, one of the biggest albums of 2021. Yeah. Uh, that I'm sure it had to be a highlight for you. Can you walk me through how you were able to get connected to Ye to get on that track and to get on to get on Donda? Excuse me. Honestly, man, I don't know, man. You really? feel me? Like just being, just being ill, man. Just so Ye hit you up. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. He didn't hit me up. It happened, um, so we did a show before, like in 2020, before the country shut down yeah. with the with the pandemic and shit, and um, we did a show out here at the Novo in LA. And um, he didn't come to it, but he invited us to the Sunday service right. that Sunday. Yeah. So we go to that, and then he see us and whatever in the crowd, and 
after it was over, he wanted us to come like in the backstage area or whatever of it, and um, we just uh, he just wanted to meet us and talk and we kicking it, and you know Kanye just uh, you know you know how he is man he just kind of spurred a moment man and. and he just got a, a feeling like, yo, man, we should just go right now to Cabo and just work on some music. Really? Y'all are right here. Like, let's just go do something. Yeah. You know what I mean? But obviously, me and Benny, you know, we had some, you know what I mean? Some right. stipulations that <laughs> prevented us from leaving the country so freely. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we ended up, we ended up going to the ranch and why, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Go fuck with that. And then just over time, like, I just spent a lot of time out there. What were, the, what were the studio sessions like? At first, it was kind of, you know, different for me, I'm going to say. Because, like, you know, I, I, I didn't really grow up in the church right. world, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, and none of that. And, you know, I'm used to studio sessions where it's like, you know, it's the homies around, yeah. and these niggas smoking, niggas drinking. It's, right. You know, you got ladies over here, you got niggas smoking over there, shooting dice, there's beats being played, like... And this one, like, ain't no smoking, no drinking, no nothing. You can't even have your, <laughs> your fucking, your, your cell phone up in there, motherfucker. Like, and it was kind of weird at first. Not weird, just different, you know what I'm saying, the, f the first couple days. But, you know, it was nothing for me, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I was just happy and blessed to even be, you know, welcomed yeah. in that man's atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? So, like... I, I'm, I'm forever grateful, and I, you know, I got, I got, I got the homie back, regardless from forever. I can certainly imagine. I can certainly imagine. Back in July, Benny had, Benny had his funny. I, it wasn't necessarily funny, but I just, I love when y'all talk y'all shit. And Benny was saying that there's a lot of imitators to Griselda in this game. Mm -hmm. One, do you feel that way as well? And then two, how vast do you feel like the impact of Griselda has been on the music game this quickly? I mean. I mean, I get what he was saying, you know what I'm saying? And I, and, you know, I get what he was saying, but I want to say, like, imitators, mm -hmm. I would just say, you know, inspired. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, you know what I mean? It's like, man, this shit we doing, man, it's not even what we doing. What we inspiring people and putting inside of these artists that you hear and coming out and even artists that, you know, been out and made music a certain type of way, it was getting into their south bag or they, they shy rack drill bag and all that. You know what I'm saying? They auto-tune bag and all that to, to, you know, eat. See, we just, all we did was just show niggas, dog, you can still eat and still, you know what I mean? You can have all this shit still doing it your way. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's all about how you hustle it. You know what I'm saying? It's all about your approach. You know what I'm saying? So. I want to say niggas is imitating. It's some, it's some niggas that's just blatantly biting. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Biting our shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna just gloss over that either. Right. But you I know don't give a are. fuck about them niggas. Right. But you know what I'm saying? I'm not just gonna just blanket everybody and say, oh man, we they imitating Griselda. Nah, we just putting that spark back in people. Yeah, we make, you know what I'm saying? We putting that feeling back into this shit, yeah. and it's inspiring. It feel good. It's impactful. And that, you know, to go to your next question, how vast it is, I think it's worldwide. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna see the same shit if we was in Japan right now. Right. Hoodie, our merches, our hoodies and shit everywhere. There's murals on my face and shit, you know, my bullet wounds and all that shit on walls in Australia. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just thankful and blessed to even be the guy that did that. You know what I'm saying? No, it's spectacular. Uh, final two questions for you. Uh, this one. There's been rumors online, speculation that after this album, you may venture back to being independent after your tenure with Shady Records. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Is there any issues with Shady Records? Do you want to continue that partnership? Or um, nah, there's no issues with Shady Records at all. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I, I'm thankful. Like I said, man, I'm just thankful, man. I'm blessed. I appreciate, you know, everybody over there at Shady Records, man. You know, from from the top on down, Eminem, Paul, you know what I'm saying, Tracy, Mike, H, like the whole the whole pe the whole building, you feel me? And I I've never had an issue and you know, I have one, I have no issues now. You know what I'm saying? And you know, if that's where, you know, my journey in life take me to, you know, to doing more business with, with Shady then 
I'm with that too. You know what I'm saying? But you know, after this album, you know, my contractual obligations will be fulfilled, right. and I'ma just, you know, whatever come with it, come with it. I'ma just, you know, accept it and be thankful. Use on your sports analogies earlier. That sound like a, a max player about to hit yeah, free agency. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I max see the player. You know, I'm, I'm a max player though. <laughs> I see. You know, it. I am a max yeah. player. I gotta get. I got to get that 250 that, million. That's only right. Really? That fire. <laughs> I got to get that Kawhi Leonard deal. It's only right. <laughs> it's only right. Wow. Um, I asked you at the beginning of the interview. I was like, where were you? Where? How would you describe yourself when you're stepping into this album as an mm -hmm. artist? Mm -hmm. When fans are able to digest, God don't make mistakes. What do you hope that narrative is for Conway going forward? <sighs> Man, I, don't, I haven't really thought about that either. Um, I just hope they know that I'm just, you know, I take this shit serious, you know what I'm saying? And I'm really, 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 really good at this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm really good at this shit, you know what I'm saying? Of, of making music, my kind of music, telling my story, that being transparent and telling my, my testimonies, man. So tonight, we're here in Los Angeles mm -hmm. at the region. Yeah. You excited for the show? Uh, I'm excited, man. LA usually always be my, some of my, my, my latest show on the whole tours. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm happy that I can't wait. I ain't been, like I said, last time I was here, it was the last show before they shut the country down. Oh, shit. So it was like March 7th, I want to say. Yeah. And then it was like nothing for the whole year. So like, I'm happy to be back. This shit gonna feel good tonight. Absolutely, the energy feel good. I'm yeah. like, I think it's gonna be a legendary yeah, show. Yeah, man, it's gonna be legendary. Conway, appreciate you, my man, G. Thank you, dog. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.